Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're working on planting five different varieties of hardy geranium out in the garden. You can kind of see them right behind me. I want to run through each one of them because each one is slightly different. Hardy geraniums are awesome plants. They're just, they're kind of like, you know, we recently planted a bunch of nepeta out in the garden. They're plants that I lean heavily on as being just the workhorse kind of powerhouse plants. Um, also echinacea, rudbeckia, yarrow, things like that that just produce so much interest but they're not a lot of fuss. These fit into that category for me, and there are so many varieties. I mean, like really low growing, tight growing plants, like alpine type varieties that are really good for rock garden sort of situations uh, because they do tend to be more drought tolerant. They can handle that all the way up to like some pretty good size, substantial size perennials. And depending on what variety you choose, they can provide upwards of four seasons of interest because some varieties are evergreen, and I do have one of those here today. And these are completely different than the the uh, zonal type geraniums or pelargoniums, most often um, known by their spherical large shaped blooms that we grow in containers, window boxes, um, sometimes as house plants they do grow inside really well. These are completely different, they have a different growth habit and they are perennial. Um, they're also known as, or perennial rather, in, in cooler climates. Um, so they're also known as cranesbill, um, sometimes bloody cranesbill, wild geranium, hardy geranium, I already said that I think. So let's take a look quick at each of these varieties. I'll go through more in detail once they're out in the garden and planted where I want to have them. Uh, but this one's called white big root geranium. So the flowers are kind of a, well, they're a white, but kind of on the pink side of white, but the buds are pink and the stems have kind of a pink vibe to them. So they really are a unique looking flower. They usually produce uh, foliage down below, foliage canopy, and then they send up these uh, stalks that have blooms and they're really good to intermingle, interplant with other things because these will kind of weave in and out and pop through other plants. Just really a really neat plant. And then we've got back here one called apple blossom, which you can see all of the blooms that this plant did have. Um, it's full of buds as well. Some varieties will bloom all season. Some are just early in the season, so it just depends. But these have a really soft pink bloom with dark pink veins. Really gorgeous. Then we've got an azure rush geranium right here, which have these kind of periwinkle blue blooms with the white eye really interesting and they've got a really pretty leaf structure as well now this one right here the azure rush is a sport or kind of like a family member of this one right here which is roseanne um, so this one here is supposed to be oh Hey Russell, this one's supposed to be a little bit more tight growing, more compact than Roseanne is, but they really do get quite similar in size. So we're just gonna have to see, like you can see right here, just based on this one gallon size plant that these do have a more compact leaf canopy than these do, and these leaves are bigger. But the Roseanne has a deeper blue bloom, not in spectacular bloom at the moment. And that's just one thing about a lot of plants that you see at the garden center. A lot of times you can't judge a plant based on what it's doing in a container because they will react completely differently once you get them in the ground. And then we have Mavis Simpson, which is a beautiful medium pink. I only picked up three of these because these are rated down only to a zone six. Um, while the others are a zone five or a four, I kind of want to see how these do before I put in a bigger area of them. We are technically a zone six at this point, but only up to about like three years ago. Um, so a lot of us still plant like we are a zone five because you just never know what's going to happen. And we're not used to planting for a zone six. So we're a little tentative about plants that are rated only down to that uh, zone. So anyway, that's why I err on caution with that variety. A few other really great things about hardy geraniums is that they are attractive to pollinators. So bees and butterflies really like them. Uh, they are deer resistant and a lot of them are actually termed fire resistant plants, uh, especially the Roseanne variety of the five I have here today. And I know that that is something that's on a lot of people's minds, those especially that have been in areas where there have been huge wildfires and things like that. Having plants that are fire resistant is uh, really a benefit. In terms of care, they're kind of like a salvia. They'll come out most varieties, they bloom once, and then you can cut them all the way back to, down to the ground. You can cut them down to their leaf canopy if you want to, that's a little bit more tricky. If you cut them all the way back down to the ground, they will flush out in just like a couple of weeks. They'll flush out new leaves and they'll have a ton of energy to produce a second crop of blooms. And that's how we treat most of our hardy geraniums here. They tend to only need to be divided every like five or so years. I typically don't divide. Unless I start seeing something like hollow out in the center and start flopping over a little bit more, I usually, 
usually only divide stuff when I see that like, okay, that needs to be divided. But if I can get more than five years out of a plant, I will. And fertilizer, they do not need a lot. Um, so I'm gonna be using Biotone Starter like I normally do. You can do a slow release fertilizer in the spring. That's typically enough for them for the whole season. You can go in with the second application though after you cut them back. Just if you've got all your tools with you, bring some fertilizer along with you, cut them back, sprinkle some fertilizer around, and then that gives them a little bit more fuel to get going again. All right, Russell, you're looking pretty comfy on there. I'm about ready to drive this thing out to the garden. What you gonna do? What are you gonna do, huh? Okay, we are gonna head out to the south garden and the west side. I think that's where most of these are gonna go uh, because they do perform really well in full sun, full to part sun locations. You can get away with a lot of varieties in shady locations if you don't care about the blooms. If you want them just to be a really wonderful ground cover or something like that, you can put them in a shadier location and they do provide a lot of foliage interest, um, but they just won't produce a lot of blooms. They also won't produce fall color like they would out in a sunnier location. And that's the other thing, a lot of these varieties turn bright red in the fall. So you get spring and summer blooms, fall color, uh, summer evergreen, so you can get the winter interest. They're just a really interesting plant. Um, if you do have them in full sun, they do need more consistent water, which we have a drip system out there, so we're good to go there. Now I'm thinking to put Mavis right up in here on the west side because I only have three, which is quite perfect. And this spot is a little more protected than out in the south garden. Uh, so I'm thinking that it might be a better spot here. Also, I've got purple Stokes Aster here, purple Delphinium, and purple Budlia. So it might be nice to have, because this one grows eight inches tall, just to do a little grouping of something that will bloom pink right here would look really nice, I think. Okay guys, so let's just get all of these planted, then we'll do a walkthrough tour, and I'll give you more details about each specific variety. Let's take a look at where they all ended up, starting with Mavis Simpson, which is the one we planted up here on the west side. So right here is a little trio. Now I wanted to start backed up just to show you what this tree does to this area. First thing in the morning, it gets a little bit of sun in that spot because the sun is a little bit lower and it kind of shoots right underneath. Oh, Aaron's working on something right there. Shoots right underneath the maple tree. So it does get sun first thing and then it's in the shade for a little while and then it comes right back into the sun in the afternoon. Um, and it gets quite a lot of the intense sun. So I think that this one will be happy here. Um, so again, zone six. And this one has, when you put it up against the others, and maybe I should have kind of talked about that when it was in the back of the gator, but this one has much more of a silver tone to its leaves. Um, not quite as green, just a little more silver. When you can kind of tell up next to the Stokes Aster, that has much more of a chartreuse, like a bright green. And this is a little bit more muted and silvery. And this one grows about eight inches tall. That's why I put her up next to the brick walkway and only about an 18 inch spread. So it'll just be a nice little accent right in here. This color of pink though is gonna look so good up next to purple, plus right in the same area, we've got the David Austin Mary Rose, which has 
like almost an identical pink coloring. Need to do some deadheading, mercy. Okay, the rest of them are out here. Just go on a walk right here though. Oh, it's so beautiful. The daisies are just starting to bloom and the white wands Veronica in here. Still a little bit of color on our salvia. Looking really nice. Color on our yarrow. Oh, look at this weed. What in the actual world is that doing in here? Look at that. Oh my goodness. So that's the thing, just pack your beds full and you will hardly ever even notice the big weeds. And this little rose right here, is it La Crema? I can't, I bought it last year. Absolute perfection. It stays really small too. Next one is right here. This is the white big root geranium. This one is a zone four. And I think it looks really good with the plants that are right around it. Um, Paul has already been out here working on adding drip to where we just planted things. Uh, but I do have some Firefly Peach Sky Yarrow. Benjamin and I planted that last night. We have the Cat's Meow Nepeta, which is just loaded with bees. I don't know if you guys can see all the bees flying around this area. Just loaded. But I thought having a white flower in here would just kind of add a little sparkle to this space. So these grow about 12 inches tall, which will be a step down from the cat's meow, which will be perfect. We'll have a really nice layering in here. And it grows upwards of 20 to 24 inches wide. I do think I'm, gonna, I'm hoping the garden center has three more. One, two, three, to kind of fill in this swoop. If not, it's totally fine. A little something grassy right here and maybe chartreuse in color would be really pretty as well. Uh, but I just think that this is, this area is just filling in beautifully. But this variety here is the evergreen one. Um, so I'm very much so looking forward to what it's gonna do uh, and also has a nice fall color, which we will need in this area. I mean, we've got the nine barks, which have nice color. And then we'll have yellow fall color out of the locusts, but it'll be nice to have some red in here down low. The other three are over on this side. Okay, walking into this area here, we've got the Roseanne geranium right in this space. So right behind it, we have more of the Firefly Peach Sky Yarrow. So you can tell I really love that plant. Um, let me kind of swing around because I noticed some color on it. That color of kind of the pinky apricot looks so good with blue or purple colored blooms. So I thought it would be really pretty to have the Roseanne down here. So it's got the real kind of deep blue flowers. I also have some Agastache, some kind of, I think it's called Mango Tango. Anyway, I have started these from seed. They're kind of on the small side, uh, but they will fill in this area and kind of add an iridescent kind of uh, leaf color. You can kind of see here, it's kind of a blue green. And then we've got the feathery foliage here and then more bold in this one here. So this Roseanne variety spreads up to like 20 to 24 inches wide, uh, which will fill in this area beautifully. Like it'll be a mass right here. Um, and then it grows about 20 inches tall. So it will be shorter than the yarrow. And then I did leave space. So we've got some tulip foliage to cut back and there's a penstem in there, but I left space for something else right in this area and something with a darker leaf color would be really nice kind of tucked in right here we do have a nine bark but to draw some of that dark color down would be really nice and this type right here will bloom all season long it will come out with a big flush of bloom you can cut it back and then let it bloom again same with the other two that we just looked at i forgot to mention that and then as we keep walking will come across the apple blossom variety, which this is more of a ground cover habit. You'll see that I planted these much closer together because they only grow about a foot tall and then a 16 inch spread. Um, so I really wanted them to be close in this area. I want them to touch in the end. They're already big to start off with. Um, so I'm going by like where the root ball is. So even though the leaf canopy looks a lot closer, the root balls are spread about 16 or maybe even a little bit more inches apart. But this whole area, Benjamin and I planted these as well. We came out and planted some Midnight Masquerade Penstemon, uh, the Yellow My Darling Echinacea, some of the uh, Cottontail, is it Peter Cottontail Yarrow that we got in, in plug size and we potted those up early. I left a little spot for maybe like some lamb's ear, some blue in here. But we came out and planted this big drift and I thought that the soft pink of the apple blossom was just such a pretty addition. So you can see the soft pink, the yellow, kind of that purple, and then the white. And this one will add some amazing fall color right here. I haven't developed a lot in this space in terms of shrubs and things like that. That's gonna kind of be the next step. You know, we've got this massive area in here and right in this space, really 
really this whole area. We have yet to add some bigger things, but it's just been fun to add. I know I want perennials toward the edges of the border, so it's fun to come in and add these pockets of color. You know, we've done it right here, we've done it right over here. In fact, this is where the Azure Rush is. Look at all this space we have yet to fill with perennials and shrubs, so exciting. Benjamin and I planted some yellow yarrow right back here as well. Isn't that pretty? Okay, we have some Italian ice roses. There are six of them that we planted last year. They're looking amazing. And the Azure Rush right in here. I think this is one of the bigger ones that we're planting today because it can get upwards of a three, almost three foot spread, like 30 inches, 32 inches or so, and 18 inches tall. So the Italian ice roses don't get enormously big. Um, so I needed something with kind of a mid height perennial, which is kind of what I consider this one to add right below it. And I think again, the blue with that kind of, well, this one's like so many different colors. There's a little bit of red in there. There's some orange, there's pink, there's apricot, there's white. Just really pretty though, with this blue contrasting it. This one will add a beautiful fall color and this one blooms just like the roses will bloom all season long. There are so many other varieties though, you guys. I mean, a few others of my favorites and they're really popular ones are Anne Folkard, which is a bright, pink, bright pink, beautiful bright red foliage in the fall. There's Magnificum, which has like a really kind of billowy look, very mounded, large leaves, blue blooms, just a really gorgeous variety. And then Johnson's Blue is another really nice one that we sold a lot of down at the garden center. And I had more hardy geraniums around our house, like in those flower beds, but a lot of them were dug up and they're actually at a friend's house uh, because they were areas that um, we needed to kind of tear apart in order to put different things in. Um, anyway, we didn't have this developed enough yet at the time for me to add stuff out here. So I'm going to be starting to add a lot more hardy geraniums in. They're just such amazing plants. And even if you do the ones that bloom just like early, usually like mid spring through early summer, they still are a beautiful foliage component, which I think is important. I don't want everything to have color in the garden. I want some things during some seasons just to add a peaceful rest for the eye, but then they come in and they add beautiful fall color later on. There's just a lot of different applications for them. And the fact that they're so versatile in terms of light um, is really nice as well. So in shadier locations, again, they will be more, more of a foliage accent, um, not as many blooms. And then in sunnier areas, definitely more fall color, more blooms. They do need more water. So they're all things to kind of consider based on what area you have. Uh, in terms of water, they do not want to sit in water. They want kind of moistish soil, but well draining, and they can be on the dry side as well um, once they're more established. And for soil pH, typically like neutral is about right. So I'll probably come in and add some land and sea compost. We've been adding compost as our mulch out here anyway, which is helping. And we added a massive amount of wood chips out here, which as they break down, will add more of an acidic uh, note to the soil, which we have high pH, so it'll help bring it down a bit. But all this that you're seeing out here on top of the soil, that's all compost, not actually a mulch. So anyway, that is it for today's project. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a joy for me to see these areas come together and to be able to share that with you guys. So anyway, thank you again for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.